In this week's Parsha, Parsha's Re'ei, in chapter 15, we are taught about the mitzvah of tzedakah. Verse 7 begins, Ki If there will be among you a needy person, from one of your brothers, in one of your cities, in your land, the Lord your God has given you. You shall not harden your heart, and you shall not close your hand from your needy brother. What do these words, do not harden your heart, mean? Rashi points out, quoting from the Sifri, that some people suffer as they deliberate whether they should give to the needy or they should not give. Therefore, the verse says, you shall not harden your heart, teaching us not to listen to that voice that attempts to persuade us to keep our money and not give it away to one in need. There's a beautiful story told about Rab Nachum from Chernobyl. Rab Nachum was one of the great Hasidic masters, born in the year 1730, passed in the year 1787 in the city of Chernobyl. He was a disciple of the Baal Shem Tov and later of the Magid of Mezrich. A Hasid once brought a gift of 300 rubles to Rab Nachum of Chernobyl, who was a very, very poor man all of his days. The family was overjoyed, but most of all, his chief secretary, who was relieved that now the household would at last be able to pay off some of the debts which were owed to the baker and to the butcher, and so on. Soon after that chassid had left, the Rebbe had received a few visitors for yechidus for private audience. He then took a break to pray Mayriv, the evening prayers. He then closed himself in his study for a period of time, and later resumed the series of private interviews, which continued until late into the night. When the last visitor had left, the chief secretary, who was responsible for the household expenses, called on the Rebbe in order to receive the long-awaited money needed to settle the accounts. The tzaddik opened the drawer of his table and told the secretary to take whatever was there. Seeing only silver and copper coins, but no sign of the bills that had made up the gift of 300 rubles, the secretary stood still in unquestioning silence. Seeing how his face had dropped, the tzaddik asked, Why do you look so sad? Has God who provides bread for all creatures not shown us in his loving kindness undeserved generosity? The secretary could no longer restrain himself. The debts that hung over the Rebbe's household caused him anguish and he spoke out in words that came straight from the heart. But where are the 300 rubles which that chassid brought? That sum could have helped us pay off some of our debts. It is true, replied the tzaddik, that he brought me 300 rubles. My first reaction was to wonder why I deserved such a large sum. And then I was happy that I had found favor in the eyes of Almighty God, and that he had chosen to sustain my family and myself with a generous hand. But when I thought into the subject a little more deeply, I became distressed. Lest God has given me material benefits instead of spiritual riches. Now among the Hasidim who visited me soon after that gift arrived was one who poured out his troubles to me. For a whole year he had not paid the village teacher for his children's tuition. The local squire had threatened to drive him out of his house for not paying his rent. And to make the situation even worse, He now had to arrange a wedding for his eldest daughter and had no money. So then I thought that perhaps Almighty God had given me the special privilege of being his agent for the disbursement of charity in a way that would earn me three mitzvahs at once. The support of his children in their Torah study, the saving of a family from being homeless, and dowering a poor bride. I asked him how much money he needed. And he said that 300 rubles would solve all his problems. I decided, therefore, to present him with the whole amount I had received. But then another thought came to mind. An amount such as this could bring relief to many families. Why am I giving such a large amount to just one person? Let me divide it and help many, many families. This view also seemed to be correct. And I could not decide between them. And that is when I closed my eyes in my room so that I could weigh both arguments. After a little while, I arrived at the conclusion that these two views came from the good inclination and one from the bad inclination. And that the view which proposed dividing up the amount for several families 
did not come from the good inclination. How did I know that? Because if this had been the view of the good inclination, then as soon as the money reached me, he should have expressed his opinion as follows. Nochum, here, take the 300 rubles and divide it up into six parts. Give away five to the needy and keep one for yourself. But he did not say that. Only after the Almighty had made it my privilege to heed the good inclination, and I decided to give the whole amount to that poor chassid, only then did this voice come along and try to speak to me in a crafty way. I therefore took the advice of the good inclination. I called in that poor fellow and gave him the entire amount. Years later, when the Freer de Kerebbe, the previous Lubavitch Rebbe, Rabbi Yosef Yitzchak of Lubavitch, told over the story, he commented as follows. From this we learn that discernment is more essential to the practical aspects of divine service than is comprehension or emotional involvement. Even an accomplished tzaddik, even God-fearing Jews, even Torah scholars, all need to apply intellectual discernment to their practical service of the Creator. This week we bless the upcoming month of Elul. Elul is the time for us to reflect on the past year. We take stock of what we did correct, and it is our chance to improve and correct our laziness, mistakes, and errors. For this, we must use our gift of discernment, beginning with charity, not to listen to that voice which masks itself in reason and tries to harden our giving hearts. And then we can apply it to all other areas of life as well. May we merit to see great blessings for ourselves and our loved ones. I wish you a good Shabbos and a good Chodesh. Ksiva v'chasim tova l'shana tova u'mesukah.